have. All right. Good morning and welcome to get things situated here. There we go. Good morning. <laughs> and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live, uh, actually, welcome to the first yes. Encompass Live of 2018. Yay, Yay. new year, new shows. Um, this is also the start of the 10th year of Encompass Live. Pretty astounding. I'm, I'm great. Sure, yes. So we started, Encompass Live started in January of 2009. Um, so this January of 2018 is the beginning of our 10th year. So we've got nine years um, in, the, in the bag. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so we hope we have a great 10th year um, coming for you. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> oh, everything's going to be great. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event. Um, yes, we are a webinar and proud of it. Obviously, we've been doing it for 10 years. Um, where we cover a variety of library-related topics. Um, the show is broadcast live online at 10 a.m. from t at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you are unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. Um, we record every week's shows, and then they're posted onto our website. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can see all of our archives. And we do have them going all the way back to January 2009. We're librarians; we save things. Uh, right. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, neighbors. Uh, um, family, colleagues, anybody who you think may find, be interested in any of the um, topics that you may see, they can watch them. We have the, in the recordings, we have the presentation itself is recorded, and then if there are, if there are any um, slides or handouts or documents or anything that are included, websites, important websites that are mentioned, um, we have links to all of those as well afterwards. So you have access to everything when you look at the recordings. Um, we do a mixture of things here on the show, book reviews, interviews, training sessions, demos of products and services. Um, basically, the only criteria is that is something related to libraries, something libraries are doing, something we think they could be doing, um, showing off what libraries are doing around the country. Um, Sharing, sometimes there are Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on and share programs and things we're doing here specifically for the state of Nebraska. Uh, we also bring in guest speakers from across the state, from libraries across Nebraska and from um, across the country. We have all types of libraries. We are the Library Commission. We are for all types types of libraries, so public, academic, school, uh, corrections, museum, anything. Um, you'll find our, 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 our topics are all over the place. But very, than many. very, 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 <laughs> but always libraries. That is our main uh, criteria. So, um, as I said, we sometimes have guest speakers on and we sometimes have commission staff. And today we have commission staff hey. with me is Sally Snyder, who is here at the Library Commission. She is our coordinator of children and young adult library services. Um, so she has to get all the cool kids and teens books and read them. <laughs> Among other things, yes. Among other things. Yes. And today she's going to be talking about the best new children's books that came out in 2017. This is a companion um, presentation to the one that she did last month. Um, so you want to look for that. Best new teen books of 2017. So she was one specifically for teens and older kids. And then uh, this one will be for uh, preschool through elementary school. Mm -hmm. This one. So um, I'll just hand it over to you, Sally, to okay. take it away and tell us about what you're sharing with us this morning. Well, some of this may be repetitive for those of you who tuned in before, but I want to be sure that particularly new people, but everybody remembers where to find things and um, a little bit about how I go about putting my lists together. So we'll start with where to find things. On the Library Commission homepage, if you type in handouts in the search box, and hit the search button. The top thing that comes up so far with the star by it says Nebraska Library Commission handouts. So far, this is all my page. It doesn't have to be my page. If anybody else decides they want to be here, that's great with me. But here's where you can find handouts from um, presentations I've given. And you can see that we go, we talked about do we need to keep things from 2008? Well, so far, they're mm -hmm. still up there if you want to look and see what I recommended in 2008. But the reason I'm pointing here today is that these lists, the best children's books and the best new teen books, which I did with Jill Panis from Grandview, El Elkhorn Grandview Middle School, are um, were prepared for the NLA-NSLA conference. So 
plopped the handouts here, you can click on just the list of books. Best Blue Children's Books is just the list of books. There you are. And so if you're just saving paper and just want to know what the titles are, there you go. But just this morning, Janet put up my Best New Children's Books of 2017 with blurbs. So you can read along as I talk about these books if you want to, or you can just print that out and um, save it for later so you don't have to do a lot of work. You can just uh, mark it up and say buy, put an X on it, don't buy. And we did actually get the Best New Teen Books up. Um, this morning too, which I meant to do earlier and lost track of time. Mm -hmm. So you can look at both of those when it's convenient for you and you can find them anytime on the Library Commission webpage. So that's, that's for that. So now we'll get on with the, there we go, with the presentation today and I just spent a couple of minutes saying I put these books in general categories like picture books, nonfiction picture books, books for um, grades three to five or six, something like that. And that's all a generalization because we all know any one child will read um, at their level. And I want you to have a variety of choices for many of the kids that come into your library, whether it's school or public or other. And um, so that's why these are here. The Library Commission receives a number of books from publishers for us to look, mostly me, I do hand some out sometimes to people to read for me. And they come in here, I go through them and look at them, read a lot of them, but not all of them. And then when we're, I'm done with them, we put them on a shelf and the library system of, uh, directors come and take them and hand them out to libraries in their, their system to put in their collection. So these are te temporarily in the area where I work, and then they go away. <laughs> and then they, I and find the out that ones. they won the Newberry Award, and it went away. But yeah. that's okay, because I don't really have a collection of Newberry winners. That's, you know, hopefully so these are, I read it. Um, donated to us by publishers for you to review and look yes. at. Well, given to us by public, and then we are then they are donated through our regional library systems. For those of you not in Nebraska, we have four regions um, to our local public libraries at no cost to them. So and school, yeah, school and public libraries. So with this constant flow of books coming and going in this one area of the commission, which is kind of cool. <laughs> it is. Now, not so every publisher book. sends me books, and not none of the publishers send me everything. I wouldn't have room for it. <laughs> but um, so I also. Go to the public library down the street, talk mm -hmm. with other people, read um, blogs and, and other things to get ideas of what am I missing that mm -hmm. I have, what's, Try and cook what's big new stuff that I don't have not received a copy. So if your favorite book is not on my list, it may not be because I didn't think it would be. It might be. I just haven't seen it. So It's amazing how many books that are published. Yeah, yes. I, every, you know, something will get an award and I'll go, I've never heard of that book. Yeah, I missed like, one. Yeah. How did I miss this? But that's how it goes. So we'll get started. Best New Children's Books from 2017. Talking to you in January of 2018. So we'll start with picture books. And I'm just going to read from my paper here because otherwise we'll be here till 3 this afternoon. <laughs> and this my, my other um, conference call. Charlotte, one of many Benny siblings, is frustrated. Whenever she tries an experiment following the scientific method, her brothers and sisters get in the way or break her beakers and other things. Her solution? A trip to the moon in a spaceship that resembles a carrot and built by Charlotte. She finally has time to herself and she can concentrate on her experiments. But then, something's wrong. She's lonely. She even misses being squished. She returns home to her family and uses her spaceship as her laboratory, a space of her own. And it includes a two-page spread at the back of the book explaining the steps in the scientific method, which I think really makes this a terrific picture book. Mac Barnett has done it again. Triangle walks to visit his friend Square. So what's the is, okay? The title so is, is Triangle. Just triangle. I'm like, there's nothing on the cover, but that's a true. picture. That's different. <laughs> yeah. So the title book is just tri Triangle. Okay. <laughs> triangle walks to visit his friend Square and to play a trick on him. He goes past some small, medium, and large triangles, then past some squares. He plays his trick and he run home, runs home with square following. And then square plays a trick on triangle. So was it really a trick or was it just an accident? That's up for us to decide. It contains short sentences and a white background for the art. 
this is pretty pretty much what you get. This is book two about Mighty Truck. Um, a re, uh, re Clarence is an ordinary truck who was often dirty, and one day the boss sent him to the truck wash and lightning struck while he was in there. Then he became Mighty Truck, who regularly <laughs> saves the day. So in the second story, Clarence and his truck friend Bruno go to Muddy Mania to spend some time together and cheer for the competitors. It is Bruno who first notices their friend Flo is in trouble. She was exhausted and she's fallen asleep. Now she is rolling faster and faster downhill right toward the stands. Now, Mighty Truck knows he needs to protect his identity, but he has to find a way to help save Flo. So they find a way for Clarence to become Mighty Truck and together the two of them save Flo. And besides, Bruno already knew that he was Mighty Truck, which is keeping him within a secret from him. This is great fun. Samson is a piranha who enjoys <laughs> fine dining. The problem is, as soon as he arrives at any restaurant, everyone there panics and runs away yelling, Piranha! Piranha! Oh dear. He tries a disguise, but his true self is soon revealed. He is discouraged, but then he realizes the thing to do is open up a restaurant himself. All fearsome-looking fish are welcome. Attentive listeners will see a few gentle-looking fish wearing disguises in order to fit in with the usual clientele of this new <laughs> restaurant. I think it showed problem solving and fun, and it's uh, gonna be a great popular one for story time. This is a 2017 Caldecott Honor book. Granny just wants to knit sweaters for her grandchildren before the weather turns cold, but they play with the yarn and unwind it until Granny has to go find a quiet place to knit. Shouting, leave me alone! She leaves and tries the forest, but bear cubs play with the yarn. She tries going higher and encounters mountain goats. Even higher, she climbs from the mountaintop to the moon where little green moon men bother her. Finally, she steps through a wormhole to knit the sweaters in the dark quiet. When she's finished, she leaves the warp through the wormhole and she ends up at home with her grandchildren happy to see her and loving their new sweaters. Sometimes you have to go to great lengths to just have some quiet time. Oh, and this one, I love this. A giraffe is puzzled and frustrated when other animals keep assuming he is a chair. Finally, he says, I am speaking up to the next animal I see. But the next animal is a lion. Uh -huh. What will he do now? He stands still because he doesn't want to be eaten. At the end of the story, the giraffe sits down on what appears to be a stone. But is it? Very clever. <laughs> Bill, a tugboat, and his friend Mabel, a barge, are not new, shiny, or fast, but they get the job done. The fancier boats snub them. One day, a little kitten falls into the water. None of the other boats seem to care, but Bill and Mabel get the kitten out of the water, and next day, they're in the paper. Yeah. Old and small can still save the day. <laughs> I love this one. Jabari is ready to jump off the high board. Or is he? He has passed his swim lessons and it looks easy until he gets to the ladder. His supportive father lets Jabari set the pace and gives him some good advice. A pivotal moment in childhood is captured with empathy and understanding and kids will be rooting for him. A young boy goes through his morning routine, which somewhat mimics what Superman is doing, such as facing his fears. Superman faces kryptonite and the boy faces his similarly green toothbrush and toothpaste. The book has, a, has split illustrations, one side showing the boy and the other section showing Superman. It's a positive, upbeat story. And don't worry, because we have Be A Star Wonder Woman, too, with a girl facing the new challenges in her day, just mm -hmm. like Wonder Woman would. I At school? Oh, there one, oh sorry, you're going to no. I think there was, isn't there one that's a good night Batman one that does yes. the same thing with Batman and it's about going to bed and doing the, doing the things you do for going to sleep at night? I've seen That might have been a previous but one. But I haven't read that one. I haven't gotten my hands on that one. But yeah, there is there is that and there might be a couple more I haven't found yet. Um, at school, the girl is kind, brave, honest, strong, and never gives up. While the girl faces her challenges at school, on the opposite page, Wonder Woman is depicted facing challenges as well. And this is another positive upbeat story. And be on the lookout for some of the other ones. And I think there's more than just these two and the Batman one. There might be some more out there. Oh yeah, there's a them. bedtime for Batman, I think is what it's called. Yeah. Um, 
there's good night bat kids there's a bunch of different ones but yeah and the silicon kind of thing you're talking about and i've seen them where they, they have each side is one is the, the child doing something the other one is the superhero doing something similar yeah so so depending on what superhero your child might be interested in these will get checked out yes <laughs> this is crazy <laughs> Rock can beat anyone in an instant in the kingdom of the backyard. There is no challenge for him, so he leaves to find a worthy opponent. Paper is the smartest in the empire of mom's home office. After outwitting the printer, printer and those in the office trash bin, he also leaves seeking a challenge. Scissors in the kitchen realm battles all, even dinosaur-shaped chicken nuggets, and he leaves as well. Each is thrilled in the cavern of two-car garage to find someone who can beat him. So they're not dismayed when, like, scissors isn't dismayed when Rock can pound him. They all are finally feel like they found a, a worthy opponent. <laughs> so it's great, silly fun. A number of pieces of equipment are working in the empty lot, and little es excavator has just joined them. But everything he tries to do ends up not working, or he's just too small. Until the task only little excavator can do, Cross the new wooden bridge and plant an apple tree on the small island, and he feels big. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, this will be satisfying for little readers to see that small can still be hopeful. Mm -hmm. This is a sequel to the 2017 Golden Sower Picture Book winner, Gaston. That's the Nebraska Children's Choice Award called the Golden Sower. Mm -hmm. So this is a sequel. Having been raised in a litter of bulldogs who each have found their special talent, Antoinette wonders what she is good at doing. She just really hasn't found anything special. But when Ooh La La, a puppy from the Poodle Clan, goes missing, she finds herself following the scent to locate her. And maybe she has found her special talent. One day, as the other letters were spelling words, Little Eye's dot fell off and went over the cliff into the sea. Now Little Eye looked like a number one. So off he went in a boat shaped like a question mark to find his dot. You can't make a word with number one. He found an island that had, now these aren't named until the back of the book, but there's an exciting waterfall made of exclamation marks, a tunnel made of parentheses, gems in the tunnel, which are asterisks, a garden of sprouts, which are commas, and a spine chilling bridge, which is a hyphen. At the very end, his dot, which is now a period. Now the dot has a different job, so little I left him there and sailed home again. And when he got home, he was a big eye. Uh, so he didn't need his dog. Didn't. <laughs> it's a fun introduction to punctuation. It might, mm -hmm. uh, with the artwork, um, making it very colorful and clear, I think it, it would be great fun. Kevin Hankies has egg. There is very little text of the simple story of four eggs, each a different color, what hatched, and the hatchlings' connection to each other. The last egg takes a bit longer to hatch. What do the listeners think might be in there? Mm. A young girl living in a village on the African plain delays bed bedtime by saying good night to many animals mm -hmm. and finally some ants and a rock. <laughs> yes, because we all have to say good night to our rock. Yes. The fun for adults and children who are familiar with it is when, now in bed, she wants to say good night to her book and the moon. Mm -hmm. This is, of course, Good Night Moon, the book she says. So be prepared to read that title. <laughs> Two bear-like creatures, one large and one smaller, try to be brave while in line for the roller coaster. The swap smaller one mentions there are much scarier things, like snakes. They list a few other scary things until the roller coaster cars arrive, and there's a snake in one of them. Yeah. He looks a little stunned, but he stays in the car, and the two creatures sit in front of him for the next ride. The readers and listeners will enjoy seeing the three zoom up the tracks and then fly around the loop before finally shouting, I am scared! <laughs> then the three ride it again. <laughs> it is good to admit when you are scared and roller coasters can be ridden again and again while still feeling a little scared. That's the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> this is more than an opposites book. It also conveys a parent and child relationship showing love, care, and empathy also with some humor. Some rhyming as well as subtle grammar and language use. Me cool, you cooler. Simple artwork fills the story and adds to the fun. This is just plays on words. The letter I, a private I, is sitting in his office when the number six comes running in. He is scared. 
Rumor was seven, eight, nine, and now six is sure he's next. Plenty of plays on words or numbers in this hard-boiled detective story. When six says seven is after him, the private eye says, well, technically, he's always after you. So it's five, <laughs> then six, then seven, <laughs> and yes, it goes there. Yes. <laughs> on a completely different note, this is based on a true incident, Sarajevo in 1992. A boy, Drasco, is manning his father's flower stand while his father is away fighting in the war. Then one morning at 10 o'clock, a mortar hits the bakery just down the street and 22 people were killed. The next day, the square is empty, but at 10 a.m., one man dressed in a tuxedo comes out of the orchestra's rehearsal hall. He puts down a chair near the bakery and plays beautiful music on his cello, then stands up and leaves. For 22 days, he plays the music, one for each of the lives that were lost, and the people in the square begin to hear. It includes a historical note and an author's note at the back of the book. And there's, I think there's a link where you can hear the, the adagio that the gentleman was very good. This is the story of the duties of a school bus and the need for people to obey the law. Similar to other titles by the author, it doesn't quite have the same charm of the others in this series, but it will still be a good purchase and kids like to read about the school bus. Mm -hmm. This is the first recipient of the Anna Dooley Read Together Award, sponsored by Penguin Young Readers, the Children's Book Council, and Every Child Reader. Edward, a pig, is extremely tidy and avoids a mess. Then one day at school, as he is replacing the paint jars on the shelf, a drop of paint lands on his shirt. Then all the paint jars fall, and he is splattered all over. Soon he is reveling in the mess, and now he knows being messy is okay because he can always clean up. Maybe his mom doesn't want him to learn that. <laughs> this is a gentle and lyrical book looking at what occurs above the pond and what occurs within the pond, which the book calls under. The page is often divided, showing both over and under at the same time. There's a paragraph on each of the animals in the book that's included at the back. This follows over and under the snow, up in the garden and down in the dirt, and this is the third title in that series. Beautiful art by Kadir Nelson and Spare Text celebrates all that is America. Wordplay is used occasionally, such as an illustration of a colonial woman sewing a U.S. flag with the words, Sew Together One Nation, S-E-W -S Together, W-O-N Nation. And on the opposite page is an illustration of many faces with the words, Sew Together, S-O, One Nation, O-N-E. It is powerful. As Mr. Nelson said in his note, I hope this work will always remind us that our ever-evolving country was forged by and for people from all walks of life in every manner. Mm -hmm. Another wonderful retelling of a popular folk, folk tale with outstanding artwork. The author notes at the back of the book that this story gave him trouble because in many versions, the troll does not have the opportunity to learn his lesson. Mr. Pinkney found a satisfying way for this to happen in his version. Yeah. I will say it again, it is great that Pinkney is retelling both folk tales and fables so children today can hear them. Because mm -hmm. I noticed sometimes kids are lacking in those. Yeah, they don't know the older stories. Mm -hmm. Oh, great fun. <laughs> don't think just Halloween. <laughs> Jasper Rabbit from Creepy Carrots is back and is beginning to feel a little more grown up. When his mom takes him to buy a new, some new underwear, he asks for one pair of creepy underwear to go with his plain white ones. That night he wore them to bed, but they glowed a ghoulish green. So he changed to a pair of white ones and put the green ones in the laundry. The next morning, he was wearing them again. Try as he might, Jasper cannot lose the creepy underwear. It isn't until he goes back to Krakenhopper Field and buries them on Free Kinger Hill. Still, something is wrong, and readers will love the final solution. <laughs> A celebration of creativity, which does not always thrive in the classroom. This is made clear. My favorite page says, I'm really good at being me, a dreamer, surprising, caring, funny, gentle, smart. You could use this to ask kids to note their own descriptors. Who are they inside? And have them write that down. Every day on the way to school, Pax gives the pigeon he named Blue a pinch of his toast. But today, his mom is in a hurry, and Blue gets nothing. Blue follows him down the stairs and into the subway train, where other people overreact and try to shoo Blue away. 
Paxel blew off the train by tossing his pinch out the door when it opens. Blue falls and all is well. He's there the next day with the shoe shop. Bunny loves stories, and one night he finds his way into the library through the book drop. Uh, he gathered a stack of books and took them home. Soon he lets his friend Porcupine in on the secret, and before long, many of his friends join him at the library until one night the librarian turns on the lights. She carefully explains the rules and gives each of them their own library card. Yeah. So they now Bunny can bring his take his books home and bring them back because he wasn't doing that so much. Lots of strange things come through book drops we hear that from is other librarians. <laughs> I don't know if I, I've ever heard of a live rabbit coming through, but hey. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit entrance for a rabbit. Yeah. Spring, sunshine, flowers blooming. We're, we're not there yet, are we? No, gosh, no, not today. At first, it appears we can to be, that we can dream. We can dream, yes. yes. So this book <laughs> will help me dream. At first, it appears to be a perfect day for everyone, the cat, the dog, the bird, the squirrel. But it actually turns out to be a perfect day for just, for the just awakened bear. Blue can't climb a tree. She is not shy or quiet, but the tree stumps her. She tries hard to avoid the issue, but her friends are all at the tree playing pirate, calling to her. Finally, she decides she will eventually manage it, just not today. Supportive friends continue to play with her and agree one day she will climb the tree. Um, Herr Toule has another, he has several books. Press here was the first one I ran across mm -hmm. that, um, that he had created. This time the author uses dots, lines, and swatches to get the readers to say, oh, and ah, and wahoo, <laughs> using their fingers to touch the colored dot, blue for O, oh, red for ah, and yellow for wahoo, with more and more dots on the page, and then with sliding lines, it's lots of fun, and soup comes at the very end of the book. In the park, shown in the front papers, the green worm is trying to find the pink worm. In the grass, on a boat, under a lily pad, and more. Listeners will love finding the pink worm in as many places I looked on the pond three different times before I found him. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure I would, a kid would have found him right away. Simple text leads it to the illustrations to carry the story. Other animals and people in the book are oblivious to the worms, even the bird that's hopping by. Which is less than but good for the worms, though. That's true. <laughs> Some beginning readers, Pete the Cat is, continues to be very popular. Mm -hmm. In this one, he's helping the tooth fairy, and that's thoughtful and considerate. But what if Pete cannot find the tooth under Gus the platypus's pillow or in his room? Platypuses have no teeth. Gus just wanted to be part of the Tooth Fairy fun, and so Pete gives him a coin, and the Tooth Fairy approves. Um, there's a couple books here from the I Can Read level of the My Word School, which started fairly recently. Mm -hmm. My Word School is more of an early chapter book, but now we have these um, I Can Read level ones. In this one, one of the newer, oh, sorry. Alexia hopes the new class pet will be something cool, not a bunny. The class bolt results in a snake, an eastern hognose. The children take turns bringing in their own pets to school, and Andrea's poodle barks right by the tank. The tank that Bob the snake is in, and he rolls over and dies. Oh, well, that's terrible. The children panic, but Bob is not dead. <laughs> he is playing dead. Oh, phew. So you can do a little looking into mm -hmm. what other animals are playing. Yeah, there are a few. Mm -hmm. In this one, Andrea and AJ are going by themselves on a school trip to the museum. Mr. Cooper has warned the museum educator that one of the students might misbehave, but it may not be who you expect. AJ usually misbehaves, and Andrea is kind of super close to the rules. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, if you don't know that ahead of time, you might think something different is happening. <coughs> this is the fourth book about Bramble and Maggie. A major winter storm is on the way. We can relate more to this book yes. at this time. <laughs> so Maggie and Bramble, the family and neighbors, all prepare. Water in the bathtub for Bramble, extra food from the grocery store, covering the hay pile, and shutting Bramble in her shed. But the door won't quite latch. The next morning, Bramble is free from her shed, but Maggie and her family are trapped by snow in the house. A handful of cereal tossed out the door, <coughs> starts Bramble digging for it and throwing the steps. 
now to take some shovels and help their neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> thought I could finish that sentence, but I didn't. Now they go to help their neighbors get out of their homes, too. <coughs> Clark is ready. Tomorrow, everyone will give their book reports. Some other stu students are nervous, so the teacher says, be bold, be smart, and speak from the heart. Clark is not nervous at all until he stands in front of the class the next day. His mind went blank. <laughs> The students encourage him, but then his teacher repeats his advice, and, her word, and then his words come back to him. It's good encouragement for those who are nervous about speaking in front of others. Clark's bravado beforehand is typical of students the age of the expected readers. Now this one, the good for nothing button is <laughs> pretty interesting. This is another elephant and piggy-like reading book, which you can see a little bit of the, the Ooh, label up there right, right yeah. the date. Yellow bird has a button that does nothing. He presses it to show that nothing happens. Bluebird presses the button and is surprised that it is so easy to press. Then ensues a philosophical discussion. Does the button do nothing if it surprises bird, does not surprise redbird and thus makes him sad, makes bluebird and redbird happy, makes them all funny, and gives the worm in the hole of the tree stump a headache? It also shows good manners as the other birds first ask if they can press the button. A silly fun with some philosophy. Hmm. And I don't know at what age philosophy is coming into things, but why not? Fancy Nancy's younger sister Jojo and her dad are baking a cake. One by one, people ask who the cake is for, and she says it's a secret. They are careful in the kitchen, let others help, and dad handles all the dangerous parts. It's a simple and fun father and daughter story. This is the fifth and final book in the Pig in a Wig series. The pig in the wig wakes up just in time to rush to her race car for the beginning of the cross-country race. A spin and a thud landed by the side of the road with a flat tire. Her crew was right there to help. Rhyming text as expected tells the story. And we'll move on to early chapter books. <clears throat> this is the third book in the Inspector Flytrap series. It's more silly adventures as Inspector Flytrap, a real flytrap plan works to solve another mystery. It would help if his assistant, the goat, stopped eating the clues and the evidence. Because that goat eats everything it can get near. These are hilarious. This is the first <laughs> book in this new series. Mr. Wolf, as in Big, big Bad, enlists Mr. Snake, the chicken swallower, Mr. Piranha, the butt fighter, and Mr. Shark, Jaws, to join his new Good Guys Club. <laughs> they are reluctant. First, some practice. Rescue a kitty stuck in a tree. Oh, the many teeth that kitty sees looking up at him. He is mm. not coming down. <laughs> Next job, rescue 200 dogs from the pound. It should go like clockwork. Mm. No. <laughs> Told in graphic novel style. There's a couple of art jokes. The cartoon style artwork really makes the story. And book two is Mission Unpluckable. Mm. After the TV news reported their rescue of the dogs at the pound as frightening and terrifying for the dogs, Mr. Wolf is determined they will be hailed as heroes for their next rescue. 10,000 chickens held in cages at Sunnyside Chicken Farm, a place impossible to break into. So they are joined by legs, a tarantula. Mr. Shark is terrified of legs. <laughs> what could go wrong? There are two other books out I haven't read, mm. book three and four. So if you've got these were just Silly fun, and I think they'll be very popular. <clears throat> this is a part of Humphrey's Tiny Tales. This is book six. Sorry. Garth hides a small treasure chest under Humphrey's bedding. It is the prize for the upcoming treasure hunt for his class being held in his backyard. But when it comes time for the prize, it is not there. The riddle clues will grab the readers and who took the prize will also baffle them. There are plenty of illustrations with some all text pages thrown in between them. Adventurous best friends, mer children, Lily and Finn, sometimes go outside the allowed area near their undersea home. Stories of dangerous krakens and two legs seem more like legend than truth. 
Finn is captured by the unscrupulous snorkels, a human couple who want one of every sea creature for their aquarium, and they will stop at nothing to get him. It is up to Lily to rescue him. Adventure, humor, and mer people will appeal to readers. Another series, this is the first book in it. Um, Sophie works as a maid in the castle and is astounded when she overhears the queen and Sir Fitzroy agreeing they should rid the kingdom of all the magical animals that live in the nearby forest. When a little dragon crash lands in the apple orchard, Sophie hides him and is determined to return him to his family. It helps that a magic stone she found allows her to talk with the dragon. A light fantasy that will appeal to magic fans with illustrations usually on every other two page spread. And book two is the sky unicorn. Ava and her family live on boats that travel the rivers and with others perform plays to entertain the people. When Ava realizes a baby sky unicorn, unicorn has been captured by Sir Fitzroy, she knows it is up to her and her new friend Sophie to free it. If you have magical creature fans at your library, the remaining, remaining ones in the series goes up to number six, so you might want to look and see Ooh. if the first two were popular, you might want to get some of the other ones. I have them listed on the handout so you can read all the time. Another series. This is the first title in the new series, Calpurnia Tate Girl Vet, aimed at, a, at younger readers than the original title, The Evolution of Calpurnia Tate. Fortunately, they will follow this story fine without having read the Newberry Honor book of 2010. This series is set in Texas in 1901. Calpurnia, 12, discovers that her younger brother, who's 11, has brought home a baby skunk for a pet since it was abandoned. Complications grow when Travis discovers a runt skunk in the same nest and rescues it, too. They're trying to keep this all secret from their mother, but it's only a matter of time. Mm -hmm. The second book... Calpurnia hopes to help a butterfly with a damaged wing, but her mother's prized sheep is expecting, and while Calpurnia knows she can help, she cannot let her mother know that she reads the book in the veterinarian's office. It is not ladylike to do it. When Snow White has trouble, the vet is not available, and it is up to Calpurnia to save the sheep and the lamb. Each title contains science and animal information in a non-intrusive way, and there's going to be more in this series, too. Book two about the infamous Ratso's book one was so great. <laughs> this one is fun too. Louie and Ralphie Ratso enjoy the carnival and decide to have their friends join them to clean up a vacant lot to create a carnival for everyone. The lot is next door to the spooky house though, and Louie doesn't want to get too close to that. Younger brother Ralphie is having his own issue. Somehow picking up her pen and giving it back to Stinky Stanko has made everyone think he likes her. <laughs> Plenty to worry about and deal with, but they can do it. This is the third and final book in the Detective Gordon series. Retirement was great at first, lots of rest and fishing, but now Detective Gordon is bored, and so he stops by outside the police station in the middle of the night just to see if everything is all right. Buffy is doing fine, but she is a bit uncertain about her detecting abilities, and something big is waking her up at night with it scrabbling at the window pane. Now the two new now two children have run away from the kindergarten. They're missing, and it will take all of Buffy and Gordon's skill to solve the puzzle of where they went. These are such gentle um, mystery stories. Each one had a mystery to it, but um, very satisfying. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want something ah, hilarious, it's a little bit crazier. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sequel to. Eight class pets plus one squirrel divided by one dog equal chaos. That's the name of the first book. But you don't have to have read that to enjoy this one. The squirrel, Twitch, enjoys educating the dog, Cuddles. But today, there's snow blowing into his usually comfortable home in the tree. And he decides to use the squirrel entrance, the chimney, and visit the warm house. While Twitch believes his welcome is heart heartfelt and polite, he does not realize he is not welcome at all. Chaos ensues, and after Twitch leaves, he finds the younger boy walking away in the snow without any kind of coat or anything to keep him warm. He enlists Cuddles, the dog's help, to get the people to follow them to the boy, and the kids will love Cuddles' trick to get them outside. He indicates that he really, really needs to go outside. <laughs> All ends well. Well, the type is a little more dense than most early chapter books, but the number, numerous illustrations and only 72 pages will draw in readers. Only one two-page spread is without even a tiny illustration. This is book two about B. Garcia and her love of drawing. 
Book one is titled My Life in Pictures. I didn't see book one, but I certainly think this is a good choice. The big geography test is coming, and Judith Einstein asked me to be her partner. But there is so much memorizing, and he keeps turning to drawing. She thinks that if she uses Einstein's pencil, the answers will flow out of it. But that doesn't happen. No. B ponders if the act of picking up Einstein's pencil after it fell on the floor is stealing or not. And she is joyful when Judith is eager for B to use her drawing in the contest for extra points. So they really complement each other in this contest, as it turns out. But, um, we didn't understand that in the first place. Some nonfiction picture books. 40 Photos by Joel Satori with poetry in haiku form, format for the most part by Kwame Alexander employ, implore young readers and their families to love and care about the amazing variety of animals in our world. It is beautiful. They had pictures from this at the Omaha Henry Dorley Zoo. Well, I didn't I, know that. This Earlier this year, I'm just the whole photo arc thing, and this reminds me. But I believe, yeah, this earlier this year went to the Henry Drilly Zoo up in Omaha, and um, they had big displays like, um, kind of like a yeah. kiosk, but tall, and on each side pictures um, and little things about each of them. So it might be related to this book potentially. I don't know. I don't know if those displays are still there, but they were this past summer. Oh, <laughs> yeah, As a young boy, John Lewis was put in charge of the chickens. The family said, work hard and put your trust in God. John took very good care of the chickens, and since he planned to be a preacher when he grew up, he practiced preaching to them as well. It's a good snapshot of the childhood of a man who would soon become, would grow up to become a U.S. congressman. A picture book biography of William Playfair and how his ambition for fame and fortune did not happen. Um, he invented the line bar and circle graphs how that came about, he didn't have enough details to actually use numbers, so he came up with this different way to demonstrate it. They were finally accepted years after his death. A look at two young robins from Nest to Independence includes some humor and bits of information young readers will want to know. On the tough side, one egg in their nest is eaten by a squirrel before the parent returns, and later a fledgling brother is picked off by a hawk with a shriek. While that is part of life, it could be helpful for you to know ahead of time before you read the book to kids. The author asks a question. Do you like to dance? The next two page spread talks about an animal that does it too, in this case the honeybee, and includes a paragraph on why. A brief paragraph of additional information on each animal is included at the back of the book. I read books about animals all I could when I was a kid, so I would love these kinds of things, including this one. The author looks at a group of animals and mentions one different aspect of each, and then says, look closer now, they all have something. It might be whiskers, shells, wings, something. It's a challenge to the reader or listener to look at the differences and the similarities. A two-page spread at the back of the book discusses animal characteristics. You can ask the children to name other animals that have the same similarities or differences. Fiction for grades two to five or so, roughly. This is the second book about Maya Tibbs. Naomi continues to bully and challenge Maya, who's nine, to a bet as to which of them will win the fourth grade Wall of Fame game in this book. Best friend Connie Tate helps Maya get back on track and realize that the Wall of Fame, F-A-M-E, stands for, for all my efforts mm -hmm. and should not be something people bet on, but instead something on which they try their best for themselves. The second book about Rocket and Groot um, is Keep On Trucking. It starts out with black, purple, and white illustrations. It's a, like a graphic novel. Well, there's text in there, too. But on page 29, the illustrations on every page are full color. They are out of gas and land on a planet called Happy Happy Fun Fun. But things are not good there. <coughs> it turns out the safe driving program for the planet was altered by the central computer and accidentally downloading a car chase movie marathon instead of the self-driving car program update. All the vehicles now just try to crash into each other and run down anyone who's outside. All the lizard-like aliens are now living underground. Rocket and Groot must save the planet in order to get the fuel in. It's silly, crazy, and outrageous, and there's a how to draw Groot section at the back of the book. Oh, that's cool. Want to know. Yeah. <laughs> I should practice that, see if I can do it. <laughs> that, Bixby Alexander Tam is in the third grade and he loves animals. 
On the autism spectrum, he dislikes loud noises and has his own way of organizing his clothes. One day, his mom, a veterinarian, was late coming home because she had a baby skunk with her. His mother had been accidentally hit on the road, and she is going to care for it until it is old enough to go to a wild animal rescue center. But Bat falls immediately with the kid and is determined to take such good care of him, he named him Thor, <laughs> that he will not need to go to the rescue center. It's a sensitive look at the ins and outs for a boy with autism, and this includes good size type and occasional illustrations. <laughs> This is based on a true story. 1486 in England, Brother Simon Simmons finds an orphan boy, Lambert Simnel, working in a foul tavern and takes him away. Now he is to learn how to behave as a king, for he is the lost prince destined to be King Edward VI of England. Lambert is befuddled and lost. He not only must learn new behaviors, but also reading, writing, math, and the history of his family. Short chapters in Lambert's growth from tavern boy to king will catch the interests of readers of all these other medieval novels. Hmm. It wasn't really the king. <laughs> it was a sham. This is book two, a sequel to Book Scavenger. Emily and James are worried about Mr. Griswold. He is usually quite un he is unusually quiet and reclusive. Their teacher, Mr. Quisling, is acting strangely. When they hear about an unbreakable code that has a curse attached to it, they both work hard to solve it. Good puzzles and challenges for readers with more books likely in the future. This is a full color graphic novel. Jeremy is irritated by having a twin brother, Justin. Justin cleans his room, keeps things in order, does his homework. Jeremy waits for the last minute on everything. Then one morning, Jeremy finds a secret decoder ring in the cereal box and everything changes. When the biggest bully in the school, Cody Smalls, who is smaller than Jeremy, tries to take the ring, he becomes a giant, and suddenly Jeremy becomes a real cosmic commando, like the characters in their favorite video game. Jeremy then fights a smaller, small robot, a bigger robot, a giant jello-like creature, and more. All are creatures from the game. When he can, his brother Justin, who has been reading the Cosmic Commander help book, gives him suggestions on what to do. Jeremy continues to refuse to let Justin wear the ring, but Jeremy will need help. It's a final encounter. And there might be more books in this you know, to follow this one. I haven't heard for sure, but it seems yes. like it sounds like a good idea for a, a series, definitely, yeah. yes. This is the fourth book in the Carver Chronicles series, but they can be read separately. You don't have to read them in order. In this title, Calvin discovers his elderly neighbors are moving. He will miss playing with their grandchildren when they visit. But worst is that the school bully, Harper, is moving in. Calvin comes up with a quick plan for avoiding being seen by Harper. That works until his dad invites Harper to join them at the movies. Over time, Calvin realizes that Harper is struggling and dealing with many things. He is in foster care and is hoping his mom can come and get him soon. To quote Calvin regarding Harper on page 106, Sometimes you just don't know what a person is all about at all. There's quite a bit packed in the small mind. Effie Starzook has been sent to her aunt and uncle's farm near a small town in Pennsylvania for the summer. Her parents are attempting to fly around the world in a solar airplane. Nope. Effie is out of her city element and confused when the kid from the farm next door says they really shouldn't talk to her since she is a Zook and they are Yoders. Now she is determined to figure out what is going on. No one will explain. There is definitely a strain between the two families. She visits the new bookstore in town, meeting its owner, Mr. Oddbody the only black person in town. The local museum and the coffee shop, she visits them all hoping for information. And she asks a lot of questions with little results. Readers will be drawn into the mystery, enjoy the quirky characters, and how people are connected in this offbeat story. Hmm. On Flip's 12th birthday, July 6, 1966, the police come to his Amsterdam home to tell him his father is dead. His mother left three years ago, and Flip must go to live with his strict uncle on Bossom, a remote island. He is at a loss until he rescues a horse in a storm, and now he has new responsibilities and a friend. Loss, loneliness, and bullying all come into the story, which ends on a hopeful note. This is the second book in the Flashback 4 series. On their first, first mission, The Lincoln Project, the Flashback 4 failed to get the photo Miss C. Miss Andercoff wanted. She tries to fire them, but they are certain they can handle the next assignment. 
She wants a photo of the Titanic sinking. I don't see any problem with that. Either. Yeah, no, it no. should be easy. <laughs> of course, they encounter problems and end up, fortunately they live, but they end up in 1912 New York having missed the rendezvous port point they needed to return to our time. Readers will have to wait for the next book to find out if they are going to ever be able to return to the present. Yeah. The Titanic plus time travel had great appeal to readers, and this series is right on track. Hmm. So I'm not sure when the next book comes out. I should look that up. <laughs> Graphic novel in black, white, and yellow tells of caravan members Strata, her other older brother Auger, and friend Inby, who's the son of the caravan mayor, who are searching for technology to, to scavenge and save before the aliens get it all. They happen upon a find that has remained hidden for many years. Lots of robots and one robotic horse. Mm. This appears to be a standalone title, but you know, things can change. Mm. It's a complete story in it. Mm. So, I love this book. This is so <laughs> fun. Matt is 11 and he is in danger of flunking math. So he must do an extra credit project to bring up his grade. He must start a business and keep track of profits and costs. So he decides to offer lessons in running side dogs since it is one of his favorite things to do, and his family and, and he have been doing it for all his life. He doesn't remember learning. They've been doing it for so long. He is over-enthusiastic with his only student's first lesson, but fortunately, Tubbs, Tubbs comes back for the next lesson. Two students become friends. Can Matt find the needed third student and finish his school project? So the math is in there, but not in your face. Well, they show charts and things that other students are doing for you, but it's not in your face. And he's mm -hmm. a little puzzled about some of what he's supposed to be doing. He doesn't quite understand it, but he doesn't ask anybody, which is pretty typical of kids. Kids like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But the sled dogs are so fun, and he just loves working with them. This is the first book in a new series called Survivor Diaries. Hmm. Travis is 11, his older sister, he and his older sister and parents are on a whale watching boat when they are hit by a rogue wave. Travis and the captain's daughter, Maria Hernandez, who's 12, are the only ones not to make it to the lifeboat. Floating on a flat piece of wood, they finally make land. Marina is knowledgeable about survival, but she was injured, injured maybe a broken wrist, and she needs to warm up and, not, and she's not able to help. It is up to Travis to build a shelter, start a fire, and find water, and he is not confident in his abilities. He spent the last couple of years playing video games. <laughs> it includes tension for their survival and good survival information and notes at the back of the book. Book two is Avalanche. I just read that over the weekend, and it's about um, a pair of brother-sister cross-country skiing. Mm -hmm. They get hit by an avalanche, and they have survival mm -hmm. knowledge. And uh, that so that just came out yesterday. Wow. I had an advanced copy of this. <laughs> Sussy is 10 and her best friend Guy have been fast friends since kindergarten. When a tragic accident leaves Sussy without Guy, she turns her focus to the leopard gecko they share as a pet. Sussy feels that gecko Matilda is as desolate as she is since Matilda preferred Guy's attention. When the stealing girl inside her begins to convince Sussy to take things from the pet store for Matilda, we see the depth of her grief. Her parents are there, are there for her, but they are unsure how to help. Things come to a head when Sussy injures Matilda during a bit of despair. This guy's mother who helps Sussy handle her crisis. Very touching story. Oh, oh yeah, on a completely different note is Dogman. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out George and Harold drew another comic before Captain Underpants. It was Dogman. Now readers can enjoy this new series about Officer Knight and Greg the Police Dog who are involved in an explosion. The doctors have only one choice to put the dog's head on the man's body. Hilarity ensues. Fans of Captain Underpants will find the same humor and lack of decorum in these titles. It includes how to draw some of the characters at the back of the book. And Dogman likes to do things like pee on the captain's carpet and sniff <laughs> the captain's posterior. So book two, Dogman Unleashed, is a saying in the same vein, Petey, a cat, is a bad guy in both stories and there is more impertinence. The next title in the series is Dogman, A Tale of Two Kitties. I just read that the weekend before last. It's also hilarious and crazy. And uh, book four, Dogman and Cat Kid, came out December 26th, but I haven't seen it when. Ooh, so no, brand new, yeah. anybody who's fans of Captain Underpants, I think we'll just latch on to Dogman and go with it. So they're 
crazy. <laughs> I love oh, go ahead. Okay. Oh, no, okay. I just want to say um, before we um, continue, um, it did just hit 11 o'clock. Oh, okay. It's okay. Sorry. No problem. Um, and and, and, we, and you, if you, you may notice, the show officially says it goes from 10 to 11 a.m. But we will um, continue until Sally gets through her whole list. I know she's got a few more, a uh, bunch more to go. Um, that's not a problem. We um, won't get cut off or anything from our session. Uh, so if you do have to leave because you only allotted, you know, you only scheduled an hour for the show, don't worry about it. We're recording and you'll be able to watch the rest of the um, session when the recording is ready. Uh, later this afternoon. Um, also, the whole entire handout is on our website as well, so you can always see all the titles that are on there too. I just want to let people know that um, even though it has 11, we're going to keep going until we get through all the books. Um, but you are welcome to leave if you need to. Thank you. I just talked too much. No, <laughs> this is using my notes. This is a full color graphic novel kind of a watercolor approach. Try as he might, the fox is not scary and he cannot catch a chicken. He gets beat up by one. No. The wolf gives him the idea to steal some eggs, catch them, and then eat the chickens after they grow a bit. But the chicks imprint on him, and they are very cute. When the fox finally tells him that he is a fox, they think that means they're foxes too. Oh, <laughs> great, they say, oh, white things. Clever and funny and touching. That wolf is getting pretty tired of waiting because he gets one of the chickens to eat himself. But <laughs> the fox is never ready. This was published in January of 2016, but it's a Nebraska author and publisher, and it is the 2017 Nebraska Center for the Book Young Adult Novel Award winner, so it's on the list here. It's set in Nebraska in the 1960s. It's the first day of summer before sixth grade. Carly and her quarter horse captain are ready for some practice before beginning the barrel racing circuit in the area. Her best friend from just down the road, Luke, is also a competitor, and they practice together. But now her parents have told her they are selling the farm and captain and moving to Lincoln to help her mother's elderly parents. Carly is determined to find a way to save Captain, but her ideas keep backfiring on her. When the boat comes in once, about once a year, the young child is in it. Then the oldest child on the island must get in the boat and leave for who knows where. This, is, this year it is Ginny's turn to care for the youngster who they call S and teach her how they live on the island. But it is hard and she keeps thinking and worrying about where she will go when she leaves when the next boat comes. What would happen if she didn't get in the boat? Hmm. And there is a sequel to this I haven't, I don't know that it's out yet. But you are left wondering at the end of this book, just what's gonna happen. Estefania, Estefania or Steph is in seventh grade. Steph wants her overprotective parents to start to trust her a little more. It is embarrassing when her former friend Julia calls her Taco Queen and hints that Steph smells like tacos because of her father's food truck. She convinces her father to pick her up a few, few blocks away from the school at one of the sites where he sets up his truck. But when some new food codes are proposed, Steph wants to step in to defend their truck, Tia Purdy. She loves art and sometimes it's easier to draw how she feels than to use words. Those of you who are fans of Stick Dog might want to know that there is also Stick Cat. This is book mm -hmm. two, Cats in the City. This time, the two friends must go out Edith's window on the other side of the building to rescue Hazel, who has fallen into a big vat of bagel dough and can't get out. Oh. I don't want to fall in a vat of bagel dough. <laughs> but yes, they are intrepid cats, and they will do what they can to help her. This is book Book three in the Hilo series. This is a full color graphic novel. Hilo is a robot from another dimension and he is working to save our world with the help of his friends, humans DJ and Gina, along with some otherworldly beings. They must stop Razor Mark, who is bent on ruling the universe. Humorous and valiant, bright colors and cartoon like illustrations will draw in readers. Book four is out in spring of 2018. This one, the first two books ended on it on a cliffhanger. This one mm. felt like an ending, but there's another book coming, so something else was an else, yeah. <laughs> Nonfiction for grades two to five or so. 20 poems, each celebrating the style and content of a well-known poet, starting with Basho, born in 1644, to Maya Angelou and current poets. Colorful, eye-catching illustrations add to the celebration. 
a couple of paragraphs about each of the selected poets. It's included at the back of the book, and I think that's a pretty amazing effort to write in the style of the poet that they're honoring. Blue, mm -hmm. I can't write poetry at all. It's like blue is a red, violet is a blue. Kind of <laughs> so to kind be able of to like do that. No, it's not like a cover band of music because they're not covered. Oh, isn't that? Oh, yeah. It's just still, uh, yeah. It's, yeah, kind of a tribute style. style. Yeah, yeah, tribute. That's like better. Able to, to do that. that. It's amazing. It's yes. beautiful. Uh, this is about Chris Everett and Martina Navratilova. It's a brief biography of them both. It starts with Chris Everett and her dominance in tennis, and a brief biography also of Martina Navratilova, including the fact that the Cold War was going strong while they were mm -hmm. playing tennis. The author focuses on Martina's efforts to improve her play and how she finally began to beat Chris. It is most notable that, with all the sports in history to choose from, the author believes this rivalry was the greatest. Of course, it did last a number of years. It includes a list of dates at the back and what they were each doing at that time. I love this book. <laughs> includes 23 lesser known animals to the reader. The author states that most animal books include the same culprits each time, elephants, mm. tigers. Mm. It is time for kids to read about the numbat, the dagger tooth flower bat, as well as the southern right wheel dolphin. Each two page spread includes some known facts, a large illustration, and a quirky fact about that one. It's fascinating. Hmm. Oh, I bought um, this book because I just had it. So I could <laughs> talk about it. It's beautiful. The author is a wildlife photographer and she was spending a few months in Kenya in a tented camp when a ranger came by and asked her to raise a wild serval kitten who had been separated from his parents. Hmm. This is a photo essay of Susie and Moto's story. Moto is, re is returned to the wild as promised, but not before he steals Susie's and the reader's hearts. Mm -hmm. It's full of great pictures. Mm -hmm. The one with him and his first mouse. <laughs> Recognized as the first new carnivore found in the Western Hemisphere in 35 years, the author tells of what all was involved in realizing there was a separate species and the steps needed to verify its existence. And it was pretty amazing what um, all they had to do to make it um, and put it in the record. I guess is what I'm saying. To make it like really verify, confirm that it was really yeah, it really a, was a separate new and whole species. special species. Species. Flamingito. Sergeant Reckless. I showed this book to my husband. He bought one for his friend for his Christmas present. The front end papers carry headlines about the outbreak of war in Korea. The story begins with a hungry little horse and the U.S. Marines who fed her. They had a new cannon at the top of the hill, which they had named Reckless Rifle. The shells were heavy and they were exhausted from carrying them up the hill. Maybe the little mare could do it. After some training, rewarding her with an apple, some chocolate, a Coca-Cola, she was ready to go. They named her Private Reckless and she worked hard for them. She also had her porch that children will love to learn about. The author does a great job of giving a sense of war without being too frightening. And one of the things that she ended up doing was she would wake up the cook in the morning when she, she, she had eggs and, and coffee every morning. <laughs> and she'd wake up the cook when she thought it was time for him to go fix breakfast. <laughs> that, just amazing things like that. Just what the title says, this is divided into categories and there are three stories told each category of plants or animals that fit that category and two are true and one is not, and the two that are true are pretty amazing. It's hard to decide sometimes. My only disappointment was that one category used the famous tree octopus as its lie. I thought that was rather well known, but maybe I'm wrong, maybe just because we're in the library and information field, that it seemed like a pretty obvious one. Have you heard of the tree yes. octopus? Yes, yeah. I thought so. There's like, it's like a whole, whole thing. If you if, if you Google tree, you'll find like there's yeah. been a whole, um, Mythology, yes, so this is the, the created about this creature that does not actually exist, yes, but it's just been really, really developed as different things about it. And it's kind of a joke, yeah. to, you know. It just interesting. It started as an example for students to understand that just because you read it on the internet doesn't, doesn't mean it's, it's really true, true. right? Mm -hmm. so you have to verify things, yes, but that's okay. <laughs> the rest of the book is astounding. <laughs> Well written and illustrated, this is the story of the extinction of a seabird. First, giving basic information on how the great dog lived, what his lives were like, the author concludes with the bird's extinction. July of 1844, the last live great dog was seen and killed. Yeah. So thank you, now we're down. Oh. There's a list of um, 
what am I trying to say? There's a list of other series books that, you know, second, third, fourth, fifth. On, the, on your list, as you look at it, I don't have mm -hmm. words on that part, but then if you have books one, two, three, and you want to know book four without, and I can then you the series. can look mm -hmm. at that and know that it exists. So, okay. let's see. Yeah, so if you want, I can pop back over to the website there. Where you've got your handouts. Yeah, just, it's right at the bottom. Yeah. There we go. So, you said on the blurbs, you can open that if you want to show. Yeah. So, this is what Sally is using to do her session today. Yeah. How do we get to the bottom? Um, oh. so go all the way to the right and just mm -hmm. you shouldn't okay, get hang on. Yeah. We're gonna zoom through here or maybe not. So. <laughs> so you see these this is basically what I was reading, although I did add in some things and we had some conversations and that's a way. So oh there's a there's a link to that one. Um, page about the award that I talked about mm -hmm. that you saw the one. And I did look up while you were doing talking um while you're doing this, I can about the uh, oh, photo on. arc oh, yeah. ones. Yeah, um, it was actually just this past summer, April through September. Um, the National Geographic Society, which that photo arc book by Joel um, Sartori was about, they put them into various zoos across the country. They had these oh, big displays, oh, so you can look up photo arc for zoos, and you can see um, it's a it was a traveling exhibition at zoos across the country, so and there are these big displays like you know oh, yeah. six seven feet tall with his photos and little blurbs about them um and for anyone local i saw there was an article that came up um, that many of the animals were from our zoos here because joel is nebraska centric um from the lincoln children's zoo and oh, there were actually the pictures of some of them in this book That's um, that he used. So, so it was something over this past summer so unfortunately if you didn't see it i don't know what the plan is for the future but you can see if you didn't see it that's the thing if you didn't see it at the zoo get the book Yes, and yes, you can see them there. Okay, so I told you an untruth. On the children's list, I did put in my blurbs. I just have a new titles and popular series list here. And I did put in my blurbs. So on the team list, where we have new titles and popular series, where we just listed them and didn't include our blurbs there. So one has it, one doesn't. Mm -hmm. I like that. <laughs> so, yeah, no problem. Maybe you want to talk right. about it. All right, so um, nobody had any comments throughout the show. That's fine. Um, if you do have any other titles that you wanted to let Sally know about, you can type them into the questions. Anyone who's still here, most people are actually still here. Okay, awesome. Um, or you can reach out to her here at the Library Commission. There's other books that you know um, that came out that you might want um, her to be aware of. I'd love to hear from you. That's yeah. always good. And as you said, you know, there's some books that you haven't gotten to yet, new things coming out. Uh, sometimes, Sally, like you mentioned some, you come across the second or third book in a series, not realizing that it existed before. There's just too, too many, too many, many books many published. published. <laughs> and that's a good thing, because selection and choice is wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you know your, your community and the children in your community better than I do, so you know mm -hmm. what's going to be popular, whether it's going to be the bad guys or dog man. Mm -hmm. The gentle stories, right? You know, of course, so I think like there's a lot of that. different options in this list and in the team one that you did earlier um, last month. There's a huge range of books coming out, which is great. Um, all right, so um, I think we'll wrap it up for today's talk about books. Um, it will be posted onto our website, and if you go, let's see, we'll do it up here. If you Google Encompass Live, notice this is on just regular search. Um, you can't get to it from our commission website, of course. So far, Encompass Live is the only thing called yes. that on the internet. We keep saying that until it's not true. <laughs> um, and so you can find our website. You can also, you, if you type Encompass Live, if you're on the commission site, you'll get to it from there as well. Um, so this is our webpage. And the archive, is this today's show is being recorded. Um, it will have a link to the presentation slides with the book covers and to the handouts. Um, and it will be here on our archives, which are listed underneath our um, upcoming shows. And you can see here, just two shows ago, was the teen session, December 20th. The children's one will be at the top of the list here. So you'll have the same kind of thing here. We had a link to the recording, her slides, and the handouts page for the teen one. So if you're looking for the best new book, teen books 2017, there's your recording for I'll that. i to add the other one with blurbs to that. Well, this I just linked to the handout page. Oh, okay. Oh, perfect. So this oh, goes right okay. to the page mm -hmm. with all of them on there. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And we'll add to the top of this list 
later this afternoon, I'll say it has to get processed through YouTube and our processes here um, will be the new the one for today's show. Everyone who attended live today or registered for today's show will be give, sent an email directly to you letting you know when the recording is available. So that will be for today's show. I hope you join us next week when our topic is more books. Yay! Um, maybe some children's depends on what you read. Um, Friday Reads 2017, A Year in Review. Um, many people have um, joined into this uh, activity. Yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, Friday Reads, where every Friday you post either to your Twitter feed maybe or to Facebook or something. Here's something I'm reading. Um, you can look up the hashtag Friday Reads. Here's the Library Commission. Three and a half years ago, our previous uh, um, continuing Education Coordinator Laura Johnson started off a program more of having Nebraska Library Commission staff write up uh, reviews of books that they've been reading or that they liked. And it didn't have to be new things necessarily. You will find a mixture of things here, old, new. Um, there's the only, well, the only criteria to this is you work here and you read something. There you go. <laughs> um, so every Friday we've been doing this for three and a half years. And um, next week we're going to have some of our commission staff joining us. Sally will be one of them again um, to talk about the books that they've reviewed specifically in the most recent year, uh, 2017, looking at the last year. This is a um, Amy Owen is the first librarian here, staff person here at the commission who runs our coordinates our Friday reads programs, gets us all on the schedule, and you put together this uh, picture of the screen of the covers of all the different books. Um, if you can read that, you can see the kind of thing we might be talking about. So we're going to chat about that. That, um, next week here on Encompass Live, so please do uh, register for that one. And any of our other upcoming shows, I'm working on getting some other ones confirmed for the other January dates, so keep your eyes open for when those are filled in here. And February, I've got some people looking at February dates too, so we're going to get those filled in. We've got already people asking about what Wednesdays they can do for February for certain topics. Oh. So keep your eyes on the page and our uh, different uh, mailing lists, our email lists. Uh, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. This is where we'll also post things. So if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there you will get a notice here's a notice about logging in for today's encompass live show um, as we post about that and we'll get rid of that and when our recordings are available so if you are being on facebook give us a like and you'll be notified of what things we are doing over there other than that that wraps up for today's show people saying some thank yous thank you everyone thank for you. attending this morning and thank yes. you sally for being here for the beginning of our 2018 season we call it of end up this slide our 10th year and um keep your eyes on what we have have for you in the upcoming months thank you very much bye bye thank you bye